Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in this particular course, we are discussing about the different aspects of the molecular biology. Now let us move on to the next operon and the next operon is the tryptophan operon. So tryptophan operon is a part of the anabolic operon uh, compared to that the tryptophan operon is a catabolic operon. So, the tryptophan operon founds in the E. coli, it is a group of genes that encodes enzyme for the synthesis. So, remember that the first operon that we have discussed is for the breakdown of the lactose. It is going to break down the lactose into glucose and galactose and that is how it is going to be drive the energy from the lactose molecule. Whereas, here you are actually going to consume the energy. So, this is actually an anabolic pathway. It is a anabolic or negatively controlled operon. It always remain on in a normal conditions and off when the tryptophan level is high. So, this is exactly reverse what we have just discussed for the lactoperon. Tryptophan does not need to be synthesized by the E. coli bacteria when it is present in the environment. Hence, the transcription of a gene in the uh, trip operon is turn off on the other side when the availability of tryptophan is low, the operon becomes on and the genes are transcribed by a synthetic enzyme for the tryptophan synthesis. Tryp repressor does not always attach with DNA, instead it binds and inhibit transcription only in the presence of tryptophan. Tryptophan binds to the repressor molecule and alter their structure which switches an inactive repressor into an active state, thus the tryptophan act as a co-repressor, right? Remember that this is very important. Tryptophan act as a co-repressor because it enhances the repression activity of the repressor. So, it's become uh, convert the inactive repressor into an active repressor. One unique feature of the tryptophan repressor is the attenuation, okay? So, like regulation by the trip repressor, attenuation is a mechanism for reducing the expression of a trip operon when the level of tryptophans are high. However, rather than blocking the initiation of transcription, attenuation prevents the completion of the transcription. So, this is a very, very um, unique feature of the tryptophan operon. Now, the structure of the tryptophan operon. So, the, there are five structural genes, trip E, D, C, B and A that code for the enzyme involved in the conversion of the charismic acid to the tryptophan. Remember that we have already discussed about the tryptophan biosynthesis when we are talking about the amino acid metabolisms. So, uh, trip E, trip E actually codes for the enzyme anthranyl synthase 1, trip D actually codes for the enzyme anthranyl synthase 2, Tip C, it encodes for the enzyme 5 phosphorylated anthranylate isomerase and the endole 3 glycerol phosphate synthase. Then tip B is encodes the enzyme tryptophan synthase B subunits and tip A is actually going to encode for the enzyme tryptophan synthase A subunit. The controlling site in the tryptophan lies next to the trip E and consists of a promoter, an overlapping operator and a leader region or the trip R L. So, in this, this are the, these are the regulatory region, right? So, this is the operon, right? This is the operon and this is the regulatory region. You are going to have the promoter, you are going to have the operators and you are going to have the, um, you are going to have the uh, leader region which is called as trip L and then you are going to have structural genes like trip E, trip D, trip C, B and A and they are actually going to give you a polycystronic messenger RNA. So, it is also contain a repressor regulatory gene called trip R. When the tryptophan is present, the trip R protein binds to the operator blocking the transcription of tryptophan operon by inhibiting the RNA polymerase binding. So, this is the, uh, the repressor regulatory gene trip R. So, when it is going to be produced, it is going to bind the tryptophan and that is how it is actually going to uh, make the active repressor and that is how it is actually going to allow the binding of the repressor to the operator region and that is how it is actually going to block the transcription of the these genes, structural genes. 
reactions catalyzed by the enzyme synthesis from the tryptophan operon. So, this is anyway we have discussed in detail uh, the biosynthesis ultimately from the indole you are going to have the synthesis of the tryptophan. Uh, where are you are going to have the activity of enthalyl synthesis, enthalase uh, transferase, PRA isomerase, IGP synthase and so on. So, the, all these genes are actually going to be a part of the tryptophan operons. This we are not going to discuss in detail because we have already discussed these things when we were talking about the tryptophan biosynthesis. Now, tryptophan uh, operon regulations. So, in the absence of tryptophan, which means then when the bacteria actually require the synthesis of the tryptophan, so there will be low tryptophan into the environment. When there is a little tryptophan or absence of tryptophan in the cell, in this condition, the trip repressor is inactive because there is no uh, tryptophan available to bind with the repressor and activate it by the conformational change. So, Inactive repressor can not bind to the DNA that is the operator or block the transcription which allows the tip operon to be transcribed by the RNA polymerase. So, uh, once the tip, there will be an absence of tryptophan which means there is a low tryptophan present then the repressor is not going to be active because it has to bind the tryptophan molecule to become an active repressor and that is how it will not be able to bind to the operator and as a result the RNA polymerase will go and bind and it is actually going to do the transcription and it will actually going to produce the polycystronic messenger RNA. So, there will be high level of uh, uh, gene production or the transcripts from the operon. Now, in the abs in the presence of tryptophan when there will be high tryptophan the things are going to be reversed because the trypto if the tryptophan is present it will go and bind to the repressor proteins uh, and as a result it is actually going to form the active repressor and if the active repressor is going to be present it will go and bind to the operator and that is how it will not allow the RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter and to complete the transcription and that is how there will be a low transcription in the case of the if the tryptophan is present ok. Then we have the tryptophan operon transcriptional attenuation. So, it is possible to obtain more strict regulation in E. coli by repressing the transcription initiation alone, but trans translation mediated transcriptional attenuation offer the additional regulation. The attenuation site in the tryptophan operon is situated after the transcriptional start site. More transcription stop here when the tryptophan levels are high. When the tryptophan levels are low or sparse, thus transcription continue to produce the functional protein. So, in this case, you are actually going to have the attenuation site. So, this is actually going to be an attenuation site what is present. So, in the case in the high tryptophan level, it is actually going to be transcribed and it is actually going to produce a, a, a messenger RNA which is for this particular protein. So, when the tryptophan concentration is low, the entire operon including the LIGO sequence is transcribed into a messenger RNA. When the tryptophan concentration is high, only the 140 nucleotide which is only the part of LIGO sequence that trans precede the attenuator are transcribed into messenger RNA and the structural genes are not been transcribed. So, it is actually when, when you have the low level of uh, tryptophan, the uh, transcription will start from here and it will go all the way up to the end. So, it is actually going to have the full length messenger RNA where you are going to have the leader sequences and as well as the, uh, the RNA sequences of the structural genes. Whereas, when you have a very high level of tryptophan, the transcription will start from here, but it will only going to end up here and uh, you are only going to have the leader sequence of 140 nucleotide and that is how you are actually going to stop this in the transcription of these particular genes. And this is a very uh, unique phenomena what is only happening in the tryptophan operon which is called as transcriptional attenuation. So, uh, what is the mechanism? So, the, the operation leader sequence has a 14 codon open reading frame codes for uh, leader peptide of 14 amino acid which with 2 tryptophan codons. 
The mechanism of translation mediated attenuation depend on the fact that the translation in bacteria is coupled with the transcription. So, ribosome becomes translating the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA when it is still being synthesized. Thus, the translation rate can affect the structure of a growing uh, RNA chain which determine whether the transcription can continue or not. The function of the leader sequence is to the fine tune the expression of tryptophan operon based on the availability of tryptophan inside the cell. The two tryptophan codes for the leader sequence lies within the region 1 and the transcriptional uh, translational stop codon lies between the region 1 and 2. The leader sequence contain the four region that is the region 1 to 4 and that can form the various base paired stem loops or the hairpin like the secondary structure. So, regions are like you have the region 1, region 2, region 3 and region 4 and region 3 is complementary to both the region 1 and region 4 and as a result what will happen is that it is actually going to form a hairpin like structure. So, it is actually behaving exactly the same as we have discussed about the intrinsic transcriptional uh, uh, stop site. right? So, it is actually going to form a loop kind of structure and as a result it is actually going to stop the growth of the RNA polymerase. If the region 3 and 4 base pair with each other they form a loop like structure called attenuator and function as a transcriptional terminator. If pairing occurs between the region 3 and 2 then no such attenuation forms and the transcriptional continues. So, this is the uh, so this is the exactly the site right what we have just discussed right the ribosome binds to the poly tryptophan polycystinic messenger RNA that is being translated when the tryptophan levels are high and start the leader sequence translation. The translation stop codon is present between the region 1 and 2 and the two tryptophan codes for the leader sequence are within the region 1. The ribosome follows the messenger RNA closely during translation and creates the leader peptide. This peptide, the moving ribosome complete the translation of the leader peptide and pause at the stop codon blocking chain uh, blocking region 2. At this point, the ribosome prevents the region 2 from interacting with the sequence 3. So, sequence 3 base pair with the region 4 to form a 3, 4 stem loop which serve as a transcriptional terminator and as a result tryptophan prevents the tryptophan operon from continuing to be transcribed. So, this is what exactly happened when you have the high level of transcription uh, tryptophan. So, there will be a two tryptophan uh, uh, coding region what is being present and they are actually going to allow the formation of a loop like structure and this loop will actually going to stop the, synth uh, the uh, progression of the uh, RNA polymerase and as a result it is actually going to stop the uh, stop the RNA polymerase and stop the transcription. So, this is uh, exactly what we have discussed. So, if this the tryptophan is in short supply then the ribosome will pause at the 2 tryptophan codon contained within the sequence 1. This leaves the sequence 2 free to the base pair with sequence 3 to form the 2 3 structure also called as anti terminator. So, the 3 4 structure cannot form and transcription continues to the end of the tryptophan operon. So, when the tryptophan levels are low there will be a base pairing of 2 and 3 and this 2 and 3 are called as the anti terminator because it will not be able to find the strong uh, loop structure and that is how the transcription will continue and that is how it is actually going to have the synthesis of the messenger RNA for the tryptophan synthesis. Now, let us uh, move on to the third operon and the third operon is called as the aerobinos operon or the ara operon. So, the 5 carbon sugar L aerobinos must be break down by a operon known as L aerobinos operon also known as the ara or the ara B bad operon in the E. coli. The three structural genes ara B, ara A and ara D are found in the L aerobinos operon code for the three metabolic enzyme needed for the breakdown of L aerobinos. These genes generate the enzyme called arabinose or the ribulokinase, era A which is called an isomerase and era D which is called an epimerase which catalyze the conversion of the L aerobinos into the D xylose 5-phosphate and intermediate in the pentose phosphate pathway. So, L-arabinose is also a part of the catabolic uh, 
pathway right and it is going to follow exactly the same mechanism what we have just discussed about the lac operon. So, a single transcript and messenger RNA is produced from the transcription of all structural gene in the arabinose uh, operon. The catabolite activator protein or the CAP cyclic AMP complex which is produced by the regulatory gene ARAC regulate the expression of L operon, operon as a whole. The proteins that codes ARAC control the expression of arabiate by acting as both activator when the arabinose is present and a repressor when the arabinose is absent. ARAC is sensitive to the level of arabinose at high ARAC level. The ARAC protein not only regulate the expression of arabad but also control its own expression. So, these are the metabolic pathway of L arabinose by the action of three enzymes. So, so uh, when you have the L arabinose it is going to act by the L arabinose isomerase and that is going to convert the L arabinose into L, L ribulose and then L ribulose is going to act by the L ribulose kinase and that is how it is going to form the L arabinose 5 phosphate and L arabinose 5 phosphate is going to be isomerized by the L arabinose epimerase and that is how it is going to produce the D xylose 5 phosphate. So, what is the structure of the arabinose operon? So, uh, you are going to have the regulatory genes like ARAC, you are going to have the promoter which is called as ARAC and then you are going to have the different types of structural genes like ARAB, ARAA and ARAD. Apart from that you are going to have the some of the regulatory proteins and all that. So, this is the region of the arabinose promote, uh, operon where the ARAB is going to be produced by uh, for a ribulose kinase, ARAA is going to form the isomerase and then ARAD is going to form the epimerase. L arabinose operon is consists of three structural gene and the regulatory region with the region with the operator region called ARAO, ARAO1 and O2 and the initiation region that is called as ARA I1 and I2. So, these are the region right. The structural genes are ARAB, ARAA and ARAD. And this is also uh, there is also a cap binding site where the cyclic uh, cap and cyclic MP complex bind to and facilitate the catabolic repression and result in the positive regulation of ARAB when the cells lack the glucose. The regulatory gene ARAC is located upstream of the L arabinose operon and encodes the arabinose responsive regulatory protein ARAC. Both ARAC and ARAB have a specific promoter where RNA polymerase bind and initiate the transcription. ARABAD and ARAC are transcribed in opposite direction from the ARABAD promoters and the ARAC promoter respectively. Now, arabinose uh, operon regulations say in addition to being under the control of cap cyclic AMP activator, the arabinose system is also positively or negatively regulated by the binding of ARAC proteins. So, ARAC perform as a homodimers and interact with the operator and in initial range uh, region or initiation range of the arabinose operon to control the transcription of arabad. A DNA binding domain and a dimerization domain make up such ARAC monomers 2 domain. Okay. So, this is the DNA binding domain. Uh, so, this is arabinose binding site and this is the structure of ARAC monomer and uh, there will be a dimerization. So, so, you are going to have the uh, arabinose binding site and you are going to have the DNA binding site. The binding of arabinose is carried out by the dimerization domain. Upon binding to arabinose, ARAC undergo endogenous shift and adopt two different conformations. The binding of the allosteric inducer arabinose is also only factor that affect the conformation. When the concentration of ARAC rises too high, ARAC can potentially adverse auto regulate its own expression by attacking dimer ARAC to the operator region and ARAC production is inhibited. So, now you have the negative regulation of the arabad right. So, cell do not require the arabad product to metabolize arabinose when it is not present right. So, in the absence of arabinose uh, you are going to have the negative regulation. So, dimeric ARAC therefore function as a repressor one monomer binds to the arabi genes operator while the other monomer bind to the remote dna 
uh, half site called Arab A, DNA loop is created as a result. The Arabad promoter cannot be bound by the RNA polymerase while in this operation orientation as a result the structurally Arabidu transcription is blocked. So, this is what exactly going to happen. You are going to have the uh, operators which are actually going to dimerize and that is how you are going to have the binding of the operators onto the Araban 2 and Araban 2 onto the DNA and that is how it is actually going to form a loop like structure and in this loop like structure the RNA polymerase will not be able to uh, bind. Then you have the positive regulation of arabidase. So, both in the abs in the presence of arabinose and the lack of glucose, the arabinoid operator is activator uh, activated for expression. So, when you have the uh, low glucose, you are going to have the ADP followed by AMP followed by production of cyclic AMP, and that's how you are going to have the cyclic AMP cap proteins. Uh, uh, for complex formation and that complex is going to bind the cap region of the DNA and uh, on the other hand when the arabinose is present arabinose will go and bind to the uh, operators and that is how it will not allow the interaction of the operators to form the loop like structure like this and that is how there will be a transcription of the structural genes from the uh, from the operons. So, RAC and cap cooperate and act as an activator when arabinose is present. So, when glucose is absent a high level of cap protein cyclic AMP complex bind to the cap region side binding of cyclic AMP is responsible for opening up the DNA loop between the ARA1 and ARA2 O2 uh, increasing the binding affinity of ARAC protein for ARA I2 and thereby promoting the RNA polymerase to bind to the ARABAT promoter to switch on the expression of the ARABAT required for L arabinose metabolisms. So, this is all what we have discussed in relation to the regulation of the transcriptional regulation through the uh, uh, to the operons. Now, what we have discussed? We have discussed that the operons are being functional mostly into the prokaryotic structure, but the operons are also present into the eukaryotic structures and in a typical operon what you have is you have a promoter then you followed by the operators and followed by the structural genes and these opera, these uh, operons or can be positively been regulated or the negatively been regulated or they can be inducible or the repressible. So, in this context we have discussed about the uh, two operons from the uh, catabolic reactions and one operon from the anabolic reactions. So, in a lac operon it is a catabolic operon where you are going to have the mostly the, the operon is going to be present as the negatively regulated operon. So, there will be no production of the proteins and there will be no production of enzymes, but when there will be an absence of glucose and there will be a presence of lactose then the bacteria will actually going to have the transcription of these genes and because the repressor is going to be bind by the lactose and that is how it is actually going to relieve the, uh, the inhibition and that is how there will be a transcription of the gene and that gene is actually going to uh, act on to the lactose molecule and that is how the lactose is going to be get converted into glucose and galactose and that is how the, that glucose will be utilized by the glycolysis to produce energy. Apart from that we have also discussed about the tryptophan operon and we have also discussed about the arabidone subtron. So, this is all about the discussion about the operons and how the operons are actually regulating the transcriptional activity, activity within the prokaryotic system. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in a subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects related to molecular biology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.